So, hello and welcome to the Red Shutter Club. What? 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 Uh, like with Eurovision coming to town, some family friends of ours were like, "Oh my god, are you going? Because it's in Liverpool." And I'm like, um, "Crowds, no." <laughs> <laughs> I can't lie; I'm very fucking excited for Eurovision. I'm excited, but I'm also terrified. Yeah, because it, this street gets busy in the summer, and I'm like, I'm not taking my garbage out on the weekend. I'm just not leaving unless I leave very early in the morning. Yeah, because it's too much. Yeah, Matthew Street does get kind of crazy. I used to work. Um, in the Kaiser Keller oh. as one of the little German girls who stands outside in the little German dress getting nice. people in. It was fun in the summer, but when it got cold, it was awful. And I was like, I'm not doing this anymore, sorry. Yeah. Hi, welcome to Matthew Street. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, goodness. But we'll do our little introduction because we definitely didn't already film the introduction. That's not what happened. Okay. Hello, and welcome to the... Red Shutter Club. That was really hard to know my hand hurts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am here today with the wonderful Tabby Gervais. Hello. Thank you for having me. Did I say your surname correctly? Jervis. Oh. I'm sorry. It's okay. Really? People do it all the time. It's fine. I got a DM from Jedwood and they were like, Tabby Gervais, you are so cool. Love you so much. And everyone says Gervais, so it's okay. fine. Apologies. That's all. I've only ever heard people say... Gervais. It's because it's like Ricky Gervais, yeah. but different letters, yeah. but it's fine. Yeah, he's only your uncle, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like very loose relation there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. So I am so happy that I could get you on the show with your busy gigging schedule. I know. It's just life on the road. It's crazy. Yeah, what it's one to do. But yeah, thank you for having yeah. me. I'm very happy to be here. It, of course. <laughs> I did feel bad because... Um, it's everything feels so unequal like gender wise in the music scene and i'm like oh i need to find i need to find more more women but the problem is that the women are all so busy gigging that they're not coming to open mics as much so i don't know them <laughs> <laughs> yeah the open mic scene is very male dominated it's very for sausage sure. fest. oh yeah too many too many greg sausage rolls in that building <laughs> shout out to greg <laughs> gr eggs um but yes, yeah, so tell us a bit about uh, your story, how you got into music, like what what you're doing, just how you're living. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's go way back. Set the scene, I guess. So when I, I, was an embryo. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up, born and raised in Kentucky, in the, you know, the bum hole of America, some may say. I do love Kentucky. I do love Kentucky. Don't come for me. Um, but yeah, I started doing music when I was like six years old mm -hmm. i was like i'm gonna join the choir and then i decided that i'm gonna get an attitude Wait, were you actually born in kentucky yeah how did i not know this born and raised baby yeah i lived there till i was 13 14 i just sound like this because my parents are very english yeah how did i book the two americans but not realize that i booked the two americans yeah ellie's raising her hand do you want to call on her teacher? How did very English parents move to Kentucky? Sorry, why? <laughs> so my dad uh, works for a, a biotech company and he got asked to move out there. And we've like been back and forth. I lived over there. F I've lived over there for like nine, ten years of my childhood. And then like f Damn. five years over here. And then I came over here when I was like 14. Yeah. What coordination? I know. What that's mad. Yeah. How did I not know that? <laughs> I don't really advertise it because every time I tell someone I'm American, they're like, shut the fuck up. You're literally lying. You sound like the most British person I've ever met in my life. You literally do. Yeah, I know. But like when I go over to America, I feel myself slipping back into it. And like, I probably will during this as well because, because you're, you're American. To me. Yeah. I, I, I got Canadian when I was talking to Jamie. Yeah. I said a boat. <laughs> 
it happens. A boat. I, yeah, that's the one I can't get my head around the Canadian accent. I'm sorry, I don't like it. Arrest you me. Not James. <laughs> Jamie. We have two Jameses and two Jamies on the podcast just this season. There's like, too many. Um, but I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt that's you. That's okay. I just got so excited. You thought this I was just making up this story being like, I was born and raised in Kentucky. This is where I'm from. Well, I thought just it was like, like a callback to something or like a joke. Like, yeah, born, born, born under the bean. No. Like, I'm sorry. Go it's on. fine. Yeah. I, I, My fellow American. Yeah. Here we are. There's a lot yeah. of us in Liverpool, actually. A lot of us at Lipper. So many Americans at Lipper. A bit too overwhelming sometimes, but it's fine. Um, so, yeah, born and raised in Kentucky. I loved it. I got into singing, got into doing choir, you know, as you do. It was a little musical theatre child at mm. some point. Went to an amazing performing arts school, which was all, like, state-funded and everything. So it's not like any of these ones where you have to, like, audition and then pay, like, a huge tuition fee. Sorry. Um, it's all like state funded and all you have to do is audition and it was wonderful and then um, moved over here when I was 14 and went on The Voice Kids which was an interesting experience I can't lie um, it was fun being on a TV child I guess Will I Am's an asshole you heard it here first um, that's the tea um, and then after that, I got the opportunity to go and work and write in Nashville on and off for a couple of years when I was like 15, which was kind of a crazy experience. Simultaneously, while this was happening, I was also in a really bad relationship. We can go into that. Um, so I was like, I don't want to do music anymore. This isn't what I want to do. And then I got out of the awful relationship and thought, oh, I'm going to actually try this again moved to Guildford to study for two years at ACM and did that. COVID happened, ruined two years of my life. And then now moved to Liverpool, go to Lipper. And that's where we're up to really. Oh my God. Yeah. That's kind of it in a, in a nutshell. That's quite a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how did you get into specifically the Liverpool music scene? Like where's that start? So when I I didn't want to go to uni, I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to do the whole uni thing. And then I guess when COVID happened, I was like, ah, I actually don't know what I'm going to do if I don't go to uni. Yeah. So I was like, I'll try out for Lipper. I don't know if I'll get in because it's really hard to get into. If I do get in, great. I'm going to move to Liverpool. I've I never even been to Liverpool before. And so I came here and I... Um, started going to Liffa and it was great and it's I don't think I actually got outside of the Liffa music scene until like summer of last year summer 2022 when I I was here for the whole summer I didn't go home mm. and that's when I was like okay I'm gonna go out my comfort zone I'm actually just gonna go and do open mics yeah and so throughout the whole of summer I was pretty much going Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Sunday to an open mic every day of the week if I could and just meeting everyone, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think that was probably like my first kind of proper in to the Liverpool music scene because it's yeah. very easy to get trapped in the Lipper bubble. Oh, it is. And the Lipper bubble is a very different bubble. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's one of those things because it's such a tight knit, small community of loads of artists. Oh, I hear James Jackson in my ears. James Jackson, get out James, of my head. James, is that you? James. <laughs> we are, are having with us all now? sorts of technical difficulties. We're already on our second interview, uh, interviewer view camera. <laughs> We've, we were sitting here waiting for a camera battery to charge. Now James Jackson is haunting us from my past audio files. <laughs> this is, it's, it's really been amateur hour. He's been on my mind all the time. It's his birthday yesterday and I'm like, James. Oh, he's always on my mind. <laughs> That oh, I was telling him like uh, just how much I fangirl whenever he comes to the Monday Club. I'm like, it's James. Don't I have classes with him and I fangirl because I'm like, I'm in class with James fucking Jackson. Right it's now. James Jackson. What the fuck? <laughs> it's my dude. That's my G. Um, but what was I saying before he came into my ears? <laughs> <laughs> you completely throw me off. 
um, <laughs> you, how you uh, you pushed yourself out of your comfort zone. And oh yeah, open mics. Yeah, because I was like, I'm gonna go by myself, which is uh, I don't do anything by myself. It's I terrifying. And it's it's entering the Liverpool open mic sausage fest yeah. as a woman <laughs> by yourself. <laughs> how yeah. though? And so it was nice, and I love. I obviously I love the community, and I feel like now I can go to any open mic and like try and break out. But break. What the fuck am I talking about? I can go to any open mic and people will be there that I know. I don't yeah. know why I said try and break out. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Anyway, um, and also playing with my band. So when we play live, it's Tabby Jervis and the Halftimers. So that's kind of us. We we got together last year for a, oh my God, like a jazz night. We literally just got asked because they're all like my best friends. Yeah. We were just like, we all play instruments. They're all on the sound tech course. And so we were just like, oh, let's just get together for this one show at arts bar and arts bar loved it and we're like we want to give you your own like gig yeah and then we've been playing together ever since just doing the gigs like probably like twice a month um around liverpool whether they're cover gigs or mainly kind of my own originals played by them with me which i really like because i'd never played with a proper band before and now i am and mm -hmm. it's really fun it is fun yeah it's intimidating i'm on uh the track right now to set up my own mm -hmm. and even just the logistics of it of like practice rooms and managing schedules and getting like group photos and i'm just like oh it's so it seems like so much work but so worth it yeah it it's definitely worth it when it pays off and like when people come to your gigs and you're like oh i actually didn't expect this many people to show up and I don't know if it's just me because I'm like the most self-deprecating person ever, but I'm just like, no one's going to come. Obviously, no one's going to come. And then when people do, I'm like, this is so cool. But it is stressful because it's like you have to make sure they're there on time. And yeah. everyone in my band is a man and men are great at being on time, obviously. So it's like you tell them to get there at five and then they get there at like half past. But it's like, yeah, this is OK, guys. It's oh, fine to be late. Plus like, it is Liverpool. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, uh, they're running on, on sc Scouse standard time. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time that I had like a little party here, it was New Year's Eve. And Ellie made a joke that said, ah, it starts at, it starts at eight. Everyone will be here at 9.30 <laughs> on the dot. 17 people were at my door in the time it took the first group to hit the buzzer and the time for me to get down the stairs to the door like four or five different groups of friends showed up within two minutes of 9 30 yeah scouse time. down to time you're like so on time with not being on time yeah I've just stopped being surprised at this point. I'm just like, I'm I'll tell people, I'll be like, this. okay, if I've booked a room for like six o'clock, I'll be like, oh no, I've booked it for like 5.30 or five o'clock. And yeah. then they'll get there for six for when I've actually booked the room. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to steal that. Yeah. Just start telling them it's it's earlier than it actually is. And then oh, they'll but arrive on time. To be fair, my scousers aren't, it's, there aren't scousers in my band. Neither are mine. I've got an American and three people from the asshole of England, sorry, sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh, shots fired. <laughs> oh. But it is fun. I do love playing with them. I do love you guys. I do. I'm sorry. I'm being really mean. They are my friends. That's okay. We're just chatting shit. But, you We're know, having a good I love time. a good gossip. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I don't have my cup. Yeah. Sips imaginary tea. Um, but yeah, playing with the band is great. And, People always love a band, like in the audience, like the energy. Oh, just yeah. It's totally different. Yeah. I always do that at Monday Club. Uh, if I know someone in the audience can just jam a song, I will be like, no, get on the stage. <laughs> because people enjoy it so much more if there's like more people. Yeah. You know, there's more to look at, more going on. Yeah. Better sounds. Ugh. Especially in the Monday Club where you have to like, you have to get the audience's attention in that yeah. place, I feel. And if you do, if you manage to capture the audience's attention in Monday Club, you've made it. You Goal heard it achieved. here, folks. You heard it here. Put that on a t-shirt. Yeah. Um, but actually, speaking of that, you know, looking at, like, branding and marketing and all that stuff to find success in a local music industry, we kind of first have to define what success is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it definitely comes from 
well for me anyway i think when i feel the most like successful or the most like uh enriched i guess like is just when i know that people have come and they've first of all people pay to see you perform i think if someone's paid to see you perform and then they come up and say wow i really enjoyed that and you know that you've given someone an experience because there's nothing there's nothing worse than like being like i'm really excited to see this person perform and then going and like not being disappointed but not necessarily like them not matching your expectations mm -hmm. just knowing that you could give someone like a good experience at a gig oh it's honestly so good to me because mm -hmm. it's a, it's an intangible good that you're selling exactly um so i know that for uh like a lot of the stuff that i see on your socials mm -hmm. it seems like you have kind of a specific brand image do you think you've done that on purpose or is that just like letting tabby shine through i feel like in terms of my visuals and the way that i project myself into the world it for me is a way of coming across as very outwardly like confident and for sure knowing exactly who I am and exactly the way I want the world to see me. But on the inside, really, I have no fucking idea. Yeah. But I'm like, if I can, sh if I can create the idea for people that I have my shit together and I know exactly how I want Tabby to be portrayed to the world, then that's fine. They don't have to worry about what's going on inside. Fake it till you make it. Exactly that. But it, I think it is, when it comes to my artistry and my performing, I think... In terms of what I wear and my visuals and things, it is just like an elevated version of myself every day. Because mm -hmm. I think fashion and the way that I dress is probably the biggest thing for me, just every day, generally. 100%, yes. Because if I don't feel comfortable in what I'm wearing and the way that I am presenting to the world, then I will have an awful day. Mm -hmm. And it's it sounds really like superficial and like weird, but I don't know why. It's just like, it's a nice... For me, it's like my my comfort comes from feeling like I look good. <laughs> yeah. Well, <they're laughs> myself, not for anyone else. And obviously. that is one of the first things that I know that I noticed about you because I first saw you play at uh, Ditto mm -hmm. when you were like the little guest artist on a Friday. And I was like, oh, it's, I like her style. It's like very <laughs> unique. And I remembered you like as the girl with the white guitar and the cool style. Yeah. I love so my hey. white guitar, bless her. She's beautiful. Little gem from Nashville. Oh. I didn't even bring her with me. I should have. She could have sat here next to me, but next time. She's broken at the moment. Bless You're going to cheat on her with my yeah, I am. subpar. Adultery. <laughs> my subpar guitar from upstate New York. <laughs> Not even. I've never been to New York. I was I've supposed to go for my 13th Tennessee. birthday, but I moved to England instead. As you do. Thanks, Mom. Yeah, mom. <laughs> What's your mom's name? Charlotte. Come on, Charlotte. <laughs> Get your shit together. Get your shit together, Charlotte. <laughs> so you have found quite a bit of success in gigging around town. Yeah. What do you attribute that to? I think it's just networking, probably. Mm hmm getting people getting people's contact information thinking if they're gonna put on a gig maybe they'll want me to support like when i supported jamie for his single release yeah. at the cas that was a that was like my first big one of 2022 which was really fun and i really enjoyed that because it's it was like a nice crowd of people i felt like i knew everyone in the audience but i knew everyone from different places which mm -hmm. is really nice and it was good because back to the lip a bubble thing it's easy to just get on um like lineups that are just people from lip up but then if yeah. you can get on lineups of people who are not then it's like you're catering to an entirely different audience yeah and i think off the back of that like i've just had more gigs around town like we just did one in the arts bar for valentine's day we had like our big valentine's day gig at the arts bar which was so cute and so many people came and that was like that was kind of like an oh wow moment for me because i i really thought oh no one's gonna come to this because it's valentine's day everyone's gonna be out with their boo things and i'm just gonna be like singing to a couple like old couples 
but I had made loads of like loads of Valentines because I feel like in America on Valentine's Day, if you're in like elementary school, everyone brings in little Valentines for each other. Yeah. No one fucking does that here. I'm like, where is the love, bitch? Where is my Shrek themed Valentine that you're going to put in the paper bag that the teacher taped to the wall? Exactly that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought like a big thing of lollipops off of Amazon and I made loads of little hearts. Like I think I made like 150 or something. I wrote Tabby and the Halftimers on all of them. On some of them, I wrote the details for the gigs so I could hand them out at other gigs so people would come to that one. And then on some of them, I just put QR codes on the back for our Instagrams and just laid them all over the arts bar with lollipops everywhere. And it was, and everyone was eating them, but it was quite funny because I bought the sour lollies. Everyone was like, oh, nice lollipops. I watched people put them into their mouths. And the first thing everyone does is like scrunch up their face. I was like, I got you this time. The ghost of James Jackson is back. Why is James Jackson back? Leave me alone, James. James, you already had your episode. Stop it. Stop hijacking me. Yeah, man. Get out of my head, please. I did hear the American a little bit right yeah. there. It'll come out in little, in in little, little pieces. Bits. Sometimes it does. Because I'm just, it's, yeah, I think it's just a, maybe a nature thing. I'm Probably. Yeah. But I can tell because sometimes it, it, it feels forced when people do the different accents. Yeah. Like, Ellie, you have a very good American accent, but it still f- sounds like, yeah, man. But yours, it just like. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. will come and go. Like, I went, to, I went to Texas last end of May, beginning of June. Yeehaw. And oh, it was so much fun. And I, that, I think the whole time I was probably dipping in and out of... I don't even know. This weird mix of like American, British voice, something. I don't even know. I think it just, I think it sounds Canadian <laughs> now. I think that's what's happened. I think I've turned Canadian. Yeah. You're like a Canadian who's lived in England for a while. <gasps> Is that? <gasps> yeah. It's fine. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I don't know how I speak anymore. I, I know that um, I don't think i sound that different but to be fair i've i live in my own body so (laughs) i've heard the change very gradually but when i go home a lot of american people are like oh you've picked up a little bit of an accent but here it's like no you don't have an accent but i'm mistaken for the north of ireland all the time so it's like it's weird yeah but i've always done that like i'd go visit my family in massachusetts and all of a sudden i'd say stop it (laughs) And then I'd get a very mean glare from one of my aunties. <laughs> I think also because like living in loads of different places or like visiting loads of different places, like living in America, but also having English family because I'd go to school in America and I'd speak in my American accent to my friends at school and to my teachers at school. Yeah. And then I'd come home and to my parents, I would speak like this with them. So it's okay. It's not like being bilingual guys. I don't speak two languages, but you kind of do. It's, it's like two different dialects and my friends would come home for like play dates or whatever after school and they'd be like, what the fuck is happening? Because they only kn- knew me with my American accent You're and they'd hey come man. home and I would speak like this to my parents and they'd be like, my whole life is a lie. Who is this bitch? Oh like, <laughs> what the hell? That is so, that is mad. That is mad. Yeah. And my mum was always like, you will not, you will always speak the Queen's English when you're around me. Because she's like, I don't want you losing your English voice. Which also I'm kind of happy about because it means that I had the the versatility. Well, to be fair, in America, it would be a differentiator for you. Yeah. But if you spoke in an American accent here, it'd be a differentiator. Exactly, I get the choice. Who am I going to be today? I wake up. I yeah. get really drunk and then I'll say to people, it's like, I'm American. I am. Yeah. I am. I'm from America. I swear. But I like, I can't do it that well anymore. I sound Canadian. That <laughs> sounded good though. <laughs> Canadian doesn't sound that different. Um, but like, honestly, I think Jamie speaks more like an American. Oh, than definitely. I do. Definitely. Because he's just got that like, hi. Yeah. But he so went to uni in Texas, up? didn't he? I don't, I don't, I don't think he went to uni. That was Calvin. That's Calvin, but I thought they knew each other. They fine. are interchangeable. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But um. yeah, because Calvin, Calvin and my dad bonded over the fact that they both had Texan 
history because my yeah. dad did high school in Texas. Oh, mm. so they. It's been a very international day. Mm. Yeah. Well, international America, England, and Canada. It's more in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a, that's still international. Yeah, it is. It's more than normal. Uh, yeah. It's more than Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to be in Newcastle today for a gig, but it got cancelled. Well, oh. we cancelled it because of train strikes. Because uh. we couldn't get there. And it was going to take us seven hours each way to get to Newcastle and 60 pounds oh. on a coach each way. And I was like, you know what? I'm okay with rescheduling this one for another time. Because seven hours to get to Newcastle... That's a lot. Yeah. Going around the world and back. <laughs> I mean, even from uh, the land of wide open spaces, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. <coughs> well, yeah. I mean, it doesn't, it sound. yeah. If you're, if that's an American, you're like, oh, whatever. But it's like, it shouldn't take seven hours to get to Newcastle. It no. should take like three. But like when we used to travel in America, it used to be like, we would do like 14 hour car journeys to go on holiday. And that's just like. That's America. That's the man. way it goes. That's how it goes. Drive to Georgia. That's fine. Why not? <laughs> but Drive I also fact cars are bigger in America as well, though, so it's easier to do a long journey like yeah. that. You do a long journey in England, you feel like you're like sat right next to your best mate for too long. Too long. Too long. <laughs> so, uh, where do you see yourself taking this music stuff? I don't think I've asked that question yet. Oh, isn't that the question? Um. <laughs> Well, I think just continuing to gig and just trying to get next step out of Liverpool, um, doing some gigs in Manchester and just releasing more music. Well, yeah, because the last, the last music that I released was in 2021, January of 2021. So what's Oof. that, two years now? Wow. Um, do you have anything coming up? I do, I do. I've been, I've been recording some stuff. And it's it's very different to what I had released before, but it's definitely where I want to be. I feel like I, for so long, was so convinced that I want to be like this, I guess, like pop princess kind of vibes. And I think that probably just comes from the fact that I was in the music industry at a very young age. And yeah. so it was like, I kind of felt like that's what I had to be. But now I'm kind of trying to move into more of that kind of like, I don't know. It's kind of like like R and B soul with a bit of like rock influence, kind yeah. of. It's it's cool, and I really like that. And I've always find it found it hard to like define my genre, I guess, when people have asked me because I've always been like, oh yeah, I just do like pop acoustic stuff. But now I feel like I'm actually listening to my music and be like, you know what? This actually has a bit more influence from like R and B and like soul and stuff. And I think that's so cool because I think that gives me the opportunity to be a bit more versatile with my yeah. vocals as well and you don't feel like you have to always sing the exact same like boring verse chorus verse chorus verse chorus like regular pop music stuff i guess but i feel yeah. like it's hard it's easy to be pigeonholed into that i feel i i would agree i think the nice thing about this community though is people really value when you don't pigeonhole into that sort of stuff those sort of performances are the ones that people kind of look at and go eh. but when you do something different or you just pull out something like super just cross genre people are like oh yeah exactly and i like i like to make people go like oh that's like different and that's cool and i think yeah i think i'm trying not to be as critical of myself as well sometimes because I feel like when you hear your own music over and over and over again it's easy to be like oh this is not good but then yeah. actually taking a step back and putting yourself in the headspace of someone who's never heard your music before or has only heard it a few times um, is like important I think and it's really fucking hard to do but it's I yeah. try and your music is never as bad as you think it is. Yeah. Because I know that I went to um, uh, find some of my old songs and like the old distro kid YouTube videos that they churn out. Um, and I listened back to what I recorded just here in this flat on this mic. 
And at the time, I just thought it was the most terrible recordings in the world. And, like, the songs are okay, but I was really bad at recording it. And I still wasn't great at recording it. But I listened back to it for the first time since I, like, released it. And I was like, oh, it's it's actually not as bad as I thought it was. You know, it's a bit, the vocals are a bit clearer. It's not as, like, off. And I'm like, oh, I just needed space from it. Yeah, and I think it's so important to do that as well. And so important to, like, yeah, just take space away from music in general, I think. Because sometimes if you're, when you're trying to be any any kind of creative, not just, like, a musician, it's, like, you you do not let yourself rest. Like, even if you're just laying there in bed, your brain is constantly thinking, I am not doing enough. I am not writing enough. I'm not doing enough marketing because marketing now is like just everything. It is. Um, but actually being able to take a step away from it. And I'm I'm saying this like I do it. Like, no, I can say advice, but I don't listen to my own do advice. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, taking a step away from it and just being like, you know what? I'm not going to think about music and I'm just going to like, I don't know, read a book, do some crocheting go on a hike whatever whatever is your Start chosen step away yeah listen to some podcasts <laughs> this podcast specifically like you are now um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's yeah I, I don't know where well, i don't know what the end goal of my rambling was for that one just take a break and imposter syndrome it's a real thing it is it's a really real thing. Yeah. Goodness. You see someone in the studio at like 4 a.m. and they're like, I'm just recording. And you're just like, I'm not recording at 4 a.m. I'm out at the pub getting shit faced with my friends. I should be in the studio recording at 4 a.m., not here. No, you, you got to live. Exactly. You got to live to be able to do music right. Yeah. I could not write a song until I had a life. Yeah, exactly. But then I'm also very thankful that I get to do this as well hopefully one day i'll be doing it full time as my job which i'm very thankful for hopefully we'll see if not i never said that knock on wood <laughs> we'll cut it out in in post yeah but like years <laughs> later you'll give me a timeline and if it's not done by then i'll cut it out. yeah yeah we'll do that okay <laughs> oh goodness all right so i think we're coming up on our time here uh do you want to move on to our little couch concert yeah i'm easy to do that for sure do you know what you're going to be playing for us? Yes, I'm going to be playing a song called Eye to Eye, which should be out soon. If I say that, then it has to happen. Coming up, coming to coming to screens near you, Eye to Eye, Tabby Jervis. Second, yes, lad. Second ever, well, no, that's a lie. Not second ever release. New release for 2023. Tabby Jervis, Eye to Eye. <laughs> First release of 2023. That's exactly what I was trying to say. First yeah. release of 2023, coming to screens near you soon. Eye yes. to Eye, Tabby Jervis. <laughs> Of your hands, but 
but you broke it cause you're able, I was weak. But I'm strong now, and I let you walk all over me, and I will never know how. I'm still smoking a few, you'll find me drunk at noon in a new city, but the same old me. Existence dread from the government I thought the world would change in the years I lay next to our grave Though we never saw eye to eye I never Thank you, Tabby. That was enchanting. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I really did. I really did. Um, and thank you for oh, joining us on the show. Sorry, Siri's talking to me. Why is Siri talking to you? Why is everything going wrong? Sorry, I'm just in, I'm inviting all the ghosts. Honestly, <laughs> someone t- brought my guitar back to standard tuning, and I don't know who it would have been. Jesus. So I think we have a ghost. <laughs> genuinely and the ghost is mad that i didn't have my guitar in standard tuning but we'll try that again (laughs) thank you tabby that was enchanting thank you i'm glad you enjoyed it i really did and thank you for coming on the show thank you so much for having me it's been wonderful Uh, anytime us fellow americans (laughs) oh yeah the more you know we gotta stick together in this scary world yeah man (laughs) yeehaw (laughs) is there anything you want to plug um, probably just my socials uh, at Tabby Jervis on everything TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all that jazz. It's all just at Tabby Jervis. Um, and new music coming soon. Definitely. And gigs and whatnot. But just keep an eye on my socials. I always post stuff there. So thank you again for joining us. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. I never heard the dust That was, I'm going to cut this part out because I shouldn't have looked at you. Hold <laughs> <Well> up. <done. laughs>